I wanted to talk about a phenomenon called the glass cliff phenomenon. And I wanted to talk about it in relation to black women's experiences in leadership, in corporate spaces, and even in business, um, overall business experiences, right? I wanted to talk about the glass cliff. Um, it's something that's, I think a lot of us have, hopefully you've heard of the glass ceiling. And this describes when a, you know, particularly women, uh, black women, minoritized, ethnic women, ethnic minority women, um, or marginalized groups are, you know, they're in middle management or leadership manage leadership positions, and they can see the top, but they can't get to the top. They're constantly blocked from reaching the top, right? And they're rising, 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 and they hit a ceiling, basically. But they can still see through that ceiling. They can see what they're capable of, they're, they can see, like I'm even looking up at that ceiling, they can see what they're capable of and what they can do, what they can accomplish, but the powers that be um, within that organisation, within that corporation, within that business space and, and that sector, sometimes it's like, like it's a sector and this is why I refer to business because even when you run your own business, you know, there are statistics that show, for example, that black women are amongst the low, they, they, the lowest, least likely to get funding to scale up. So that, in and of itself, is a ceiling. So you can work, work, work to try and grow your business, but there's only so far you can get to if you do not have the means and the capacity to scale up, to grow, to expand, right? Um, so that's a ceiling, and that's why I always, when I speak about these things, I don't just talk about corporate and professional. I also link it, and I guess that's because of my own experience, I also link it to the business experience, right? As a businesswoman myself. And so I wanted to talk about the glass cliff, and the glass cliff is a is basically a phenomenon that was coined by University of Exeter researchers Michelle Ryan and Alexander Haslam um, when they undertook some research and they looked at um, you know what happens when firms in the London Stock Exchange listed on the F FTSE 100. What happened before and after men and women board members were brought on board, right? There was a, there was a, there's some, there was some, there was a school of thought that suggested that women leaders have a negative impact, um, and this was in the early 2000s, right? A negative impact on company performance. So these researchers wanted to see, like, hang on a minute, hold on, let's see what's actually happening. Thank goodness for academics and researchers, not honestly, because without them we would not have stats facts, figures. <laughs> we need them. We need them. So their findings during the periods of overall stock market decline, they found that firms that brought on women on their boards were likely to have experienced a consistent, consistently bad performance in the preceding five months, right? So before they even joined the board, right, they were have, they, the, the company was already failing, was already flopping. So, this is what this is I'm gonna read from, from an excerpt, right? The glass cliff phenomenon is a phenomenon whereby women and other minority groups, so I am gonna be really I'm gonna get specific, particularly black women, Asian women, but black women specifically because that's my experience as a black woman, are more likely to occupy positions of leadership that are risky and precarious. So they're brought on just when the sit ship is about to sink when they're in choppy water and so they can be blamed when things get worse so this this can happen when share price performance is poor when facing scandal obviously in my industry is pr when things when a brand is already going through it when a brand is already like people are like they've got their backs to the wall the board members have got their back, backs to the wall what they're going to do they're going to bring on a woman, a bl specifically again, I keep going, let me just, black woman to be like, yay, we've done it, guys, hey, we've got this amazing black woman to, you know, steer us. Um, they bring them on when there's reputational risk. And then what happens? Things already are, if, they, if they're not already bad, they either get worse because they're not supported, or these, Black women, these women from all, you know, if we're gonna generalize because there's very sexuals about women, they didn't really factor in black women. So I'm just speaking from experience. 
So I had that element of, you know, bias. They're going to work really, really, really hard to prove a point. Researchers Alison Cook and Christy Glass at Utah State University followed up, so they did even more research, right? Examining, for, examining Fortune 500 companies over a 15 year period, and they reported similar fi findings. They found that white women and men and women of colour are likelier than white, so white women and men and women of colour, so <laughs> break it up. So, black men, Asian men, black women, Asian women, and white women. Got it? Are more than likely to be promoted to the CEO of weekly performing companies. So they're already doing poorly and the really super qualified white men who've already been steering the ship, they're the ones who sunk the ship, they're the ones who caused the damage. They don't want to do that job, doesn't matter how much you're going to pay, because they know, they know. They're in the club, they're in the club together, you know, there's, an, oh, there's such a thing in Eng England called the Old Boys Network, and I'm sure that exists in lots of parts of the world, of the, of the world. And so they know, so they, let's, let's give it, let's give it to, let's give it to, let's give it to the people that we normally undermine, overlook, infantilise, condescend, let's give it to them. We already know the company's not doing well. Let's give it to this person. It looks like we're doing great, great visible P visible PR, but actually it's gonna sink, the ship is gonna sink anyway, or they're gonna work so hard because we expect them to work really hard anyway. And so speaking from a black woman's experience, we expect them to really work twice as hard and they might actually save this ship. Yay! And when they start to save that ship, save the company, We'll sweep back in, take all the glory, and do our job, do the job. Whew. Now I've given a definition here, I've tried to give you some, hopefully you get an, an example, I've tried to illustrate without getting too <laughs> emotional. <laughs> because when you, when you really think about it, when you get into the nitty gritty, it's a, a disturbing and intentional practice. It does happen, and I want you to start to pay attention to, you know, the business world, the corporate world, and how this glass cliff phenomenon manifests and shows up across multiple spaces. Even, even if it's not so far as CEO, look at the spaces that you're in, look at how things operate and how this happen how this happens and keeps showing up. I, you know, I think it's important to really unpack these concepts and look at this and, and I really want to have these conversations because it's time that we really started to face these things head on and look at the damage that, that's being done and look at the why you know look at why the status quo is not changing we're not getting enough disruption we're not getting enough you know we talk about diversity and inclusion what is it what does it actually mean and actually do we need a complete shift in terms of how we look at what diversity and inclusion really is and really means and what's our next strategy, particularly as marginalised, disenfranchised, minoritised groups um, in the West, you know, wherever you're watching this from, but I'm, I'm in the UK, I'm in England, looking at how these things, these social structures are limiting us and what can we do? What can we do from where we are to unpack, but also override and work against them? Um, I know we can't necessarily solve them because we didn't create them, but what can we do? So please do share this video, leave a comment, um, follow me, I'm Ronke Lawal. Find me on social media again. That's icky, but do it anyway, because the more spaces and places we can have these kind of conversations, the more hopefully we can make a change and make a, some kind of a difference. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Take care, bye.